Hey, good morning, Las Vegas. Thanks for joining us again on your local Las Vegas real estate news show, Realty Check. And we're here bringing you the news of what's going on in the real estate market here in Vegas. We're in August now already of 2022, and we have a market update for you. So that's what we're going to be talking to talking about today on the show. Always at the first of the month, right? Yeah. So welcome to Realty Check. I'm Tiana Carroll, your co-host with Trish Williams. And today we have a special guest, Leia Silva, who's coming in. And we are all local real estate agents who are going to talk to you about what is happening in the past month. Yes, yes. So uh, we have uh, the LVR, Association of Realtors, has yep. released all of the uh, July or June, yeah, July numbers. <laughs> Forgetting what month we're in. Oh my That's gosh. That's because we're already in August. It's mind blowing. Yes, it's, uh, it is. And those, um, the report, the official report is not out yet. So they usually, they release the numbers and then they create an analysis report, which we haven't received that yet. But um, expect some headlines once that is released. Oh, yeah. Well, they've already started to come out with headlines, right? We have things like Zillow and Redfin who have done their projections and let us yeah. know. And they didn't do it solely in Las Vegas, but we are one of the six cities that they did note for um, all the different stat changes. Yes, we love making the news. Thanks, Vegas. <laughs> um, <so. laughs> hey, there's no bad publicity. Come on, man. <laughs> Yes, uh, especially in real estate, right? Right. So our weekly numbers that we have here, um, this week we had 215 price reductions and our current single family inventory is 72.54. What are you feeling out there, Leah? Huh? Leah? <laughs> Leah, sorry. You're fine. <laughs> um, no, I've definitely been seeing that and feeling that on our end too. It's yeah. crazy to see these numbers jumping up from where we were even just five months ago, four months ago, in comparison to last year, it's been it's been a fun time out there when you're working with both the buyers and sellers in our market. Our buyers are like, we have options, what's this? <laughs> and um, sellers are a little confused right now and some of them may still be living in a few months ago. So it's really been an interesting time to address. Yeah, working with yeah. buyers has gotten fun, right? So um, it, it's, it's back to, oh, you know, we looked at, 12 houses today and tomorrow let's look at 20 more <laughs> okay so i i don't do that <laughs> i mean like we see uh, five houses a day if yeah. we're going to do it because then it just becomes overwhelming but yeah there are options out there and it is so much more fun right to go out with buyers and now have options and then i get to know their personalities a bit more and i feel like i'm fine tuning and you know really building better relationships and not being slapped around by the market as much but uh now we're just seeing that on the seller side yeah now the market's slapping us around with sellers right yeah so the buyers are definitely getting to find that perfect dream home now so if, if your home i mean there was a time where like if if they didn't want carpet it didn't matter it did you not were just matter. like hey you're gonna have to change that yourself now they right. can actually and the condition for, of the house yeah right it became like a three bedroom, two bath is selling for this amount. It doesn't matter the condition. And now we're starting to see the prices for three bedrooms, two bath changing. If it's turnkey ready and desirable, it's moving faster and it's still staying at those high market values. But if it needs some work, then um, those prices are coming down. People don't mind making low ball offers anymore because they have options. The investors have gone back to, instead of paying market value, um, just, lowballing to see what they can get 60 percent um is what i've been hearing on average from the investors of what they're paying of market value yep um so they're back to um yeah it, it's back to being it's old school. where you get a cash offer that offer is going to be substantially below what you can get on the market but we're back to the days where when you put your home on the market, you can't just slap it on the market. You've got to get that home ready. Yep. Mm -hmm. You have to get, go through a consultation. So we're back to doing those walkthroughs, you know, before the home gets listed, walking through and telling the seller, you know, you have two weeks to get this ready and this is what we need to do. And if it's really bad, we need to hire a stager. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And, yeah, deep you know, cleaners, stagers, yeah. let's get all these little things repaired before we go on market. Yeah, so we are back to, uh, it, it's a beauty show. You have to have the best house. You've got to stand out amongst the competition or else you just, you're, it's just not happening. Yeah, yeah. you will sit and that's the reality of what we're dealing with right now yeah. um, if your home's not in that top tier. Right. Yeah. 
because that's I mean literally our numbers are going 20% month over month in inventory which is crazy yeah you know yeah and that was you had some statistics on that that from yeah so um, the Las Vegas Review Journal they went ahead and compiled uh, a list of numbers from Redfin and from Zillow I can't believe I'm saying those words. Oh, come but, on. They're both reliable sources. So reliable. <laughs> so reliable. I love that the news just went to them. But there were six cities that they cited for it. It was Las Vegas, Orlando, Milwaukee, Dallas, and Seattle. And Vegas, <laughs> we ranked highest in all of them. Yay! So we um, yeah. had 27% uh, uh, well, 20% month over month in interest. We had about 22% in price reductions. I do want to talk about that because we've had some interesting comments on what those price reductions look like. I think the general public, you know, hears price reductions and they think that values are dropping. But that's really not what we're seeing, at least in our Las Vegas market. Yes, we are having 22% price reductions, but what are those reductions looking like for you guys? Sometimes I see them as minimal as two to two to three thousand dollars, which right. is not even substantial right. um, compared to the list price. In some cases, I feel like the um, the price reductions are just to keep the listing relevant to push it right. back out to everybody. Yeah, to get more eyes on the property once again to be at that top of the list, so that way people are like, oh, this house is still on the market. Take yeah. a look. When I ran through the numbers on Monday on what the price reductions in our MLS looked like, they were not substantial. Um, I think I was seeing on an average 3%, but those are people who were just dropping off a half a percent versus the people who were cutting, you know, eight or nine percent. Right. So what we are seeing a lot of is seller concessions. Um, we've been talking about a lot on the show. Is that yep. something that, you know, buyers should be asking for or, or could to weigh it, you know, balance out the interest rate that's the interest rates that are raising. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of those in like blast and the promotions that we get come across mm -hmm. our inbox of sellers offering um, for a buy down, seller is offering to pay the buyer's closing costs. There's a lot of different um, incentives out there and from the builders as well. Yeah. yeah. So that was on this report where um, the Las Vegas Review Journal compiled that um, there was a substantial cancellation of new construction homes because of the price reductions. And Leah, you had a client recently who went into a new contract, right? Yeah. And then within, what, two weeks? Less than that, they had dropped the price by thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, new construction. New construction. Yeah. Wow. And they are honoring it. That's so good. they are reducing the price, and then th yeah. Well, Shout they don't want to lose. Builders. I know yeah. we appreciate you. <laughs> they don't want to lose buyers right now because no. think about this um, and where we were. Just rewind to last year. So people that went into contract on a new construction last year, they're six, nine, twelve months out because of uh, supply Build delays. Time, yep. So right now we're in this spot where these people that were in contract that got approved at a 3% rate are now within that 30 day closing time timeline and their rates are substantially higher, their payments substantially higher. Can they still qualify? And if they can still qualify, do they want to still move forward with this? You know, and with you're talking about a three to five thousand dollar on average um, earnest money deposit. Some people say, "I'll just walk away from the deposit because I can save twenty to thirty thousand dollars on the purchase of another home." Yeah. yeah. So it the numbers make sense. So the builders they don't want these people to walk. They don't they don't want them to walk. They don't want to lose any buyers because then they're stuck with a bunch of inventory. That yeah. was the same conversation I had with my buyer when he saw this price, this drastic price reduction in the base, the base price, and we had he said, "I will walk away from my five thousand dollars and buy the house for thirty thousand dollars cheaper tomorrow." Right. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. No, they're going to put it back on the market, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's not like they don't want to sell it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that is one thing, um, again, I, I, I feel like I've been preaching this, is there's deals out there, buyers, like if you're, don't let these rates scare you. And have you gotten this where the consumer, because the rates are raising, the consumer thinks that the rates are way higher than what they really are? Yeah, I actually have. Um, I had a phone call two days ago and they were like, oh, I just, I'm not gonna buy now. I mean, I'm not gonna pay seven, eight percent. And I'm like, whoa, we dipped twice this week. <laughs> like there's two different contracts that we went into where we were able to lock in with a lender um, 
lower prices than what they were quoted during their buyer consult. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I spoke with somebody the other day that said, he's like, oh, rates are at 9% now, right? And I was like, 9%? Nine. Nine. <laughs> Jeez, Don't put no. that out there. <laughs> yeah. not Where for are that. you getting this information? I was like, no, he's like, well, I've been hearing that they're just raising and last it was six and then it raised another point. So he's, I guess, calculating in his head what these numbers should be. And I'm like, no, it's not true. Yeah, last week when the feds raised the actual actual interest rate on lending money, then everybody assumed that that transitions directly into the housing sector, and it doesn't, right? It trickles down, but it's not yeah. instant. And we saw dips right after that. And I was like, lock it in, yeah. lock it in, sign it, <laughs> go, we're doing go. this. <laughs> yeah. Go, go, go. Just because there was a 0.75 increase in the Fed rate does not mean that mortgage interest rates went up 0.75%. Right. Take it, there, there's a different formula, a different way that it's calculated, and it doesn't automatically transfer over that way. Right. So that is a big um, consumer misconception. It is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're here to clarify for you yes. guys. <laughs> but yes, buyers, no, rates are not as today. They are not today, August 2022. They are not 9%. Yes, no, they are not. Thank goodness. <laughs> yes, oh, not Thank even goodness. close. Um, not even close. We are still, we can still, we can still lock in a lot of people in the fives and there's even some yeah. that are a little bit below. So um, yeah, yeah, there's, um, obviously formulas um, and situations can change but right we had a client lock in at a uh, 5.45 and then they had a 2-1 buy down from the seller mm -hmm. so they were able to knock that down a couple points for their first year and then one point in the second year and yay they're yep. happy by then they can hopefully refinance down to a more uh, stable rate yeah yeah that gives them time and flexibility yep I like that Absolutely, absolutely. So there are deals out there to be had for buyers. That is uh, great news. And I, you know, I seen a house the other day um, where we're not seeing specifically prices come down, yet we are seeing some prices sell below, below market value, some um, homes close, mm -hmm. mostly generated by just the sellers are scared that they won't sell the home, so they'll take the offer. Um, I seen a home that is, uh, you know, an entry level starter home, very nice condition. Uh, it the comps in the area were 450 to 460 based off of the recent sales within the last three months, right. and it closed at 400,000. So wow. someone came in, they were listed at 460. Someone came in and lowballed them, and I guess the sellers said okay. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing with some of my buyers too. They're like, let's risk it. We're gambling. Let's just come in low and see what happens. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. I don't want to scare our sellers too much thinking like <laughs> the sky is falling because homes are still selling. Yes. They're yeah. sitting longer, but they're still moving, right? So I love that. And um, there, a lot of them are still getting you know fair market value. They're not getting the cash over appraised value and they're not pushing home values up higher and higher with those over appraised value sales, right? So that's nice. It's leveling out, yeah. correcting itself. It's the sellers now knowing that I think there's some, some of them are becoming a little scared, right? Because previously it was two, three, four days, you have 14 offers in front of you, pick the highest and best, have a fun time. Now, if the home's sitting for a week, the sellers are like, what's going on? Why is this happening? And so that's why it's so important for us as agents when we're going out there to advise our clients and prep them for what our market is doing now. Right, the um, reality of the it. The reality of it. And our days on market have gone up. Yes, um, we, we've tradi traditionally always been in a 60 to 90 day market mm -hmm. of having, that's, that's how long a listing should, if it's priced well, if it's presented well, that's how long a listing should take to sell. So again, panic, fear is driving people to make bad decisions and that's why when they take a low ball offer the first week, thinking that that's the best they're gonna get, sometimes your first offer is the best you're gonna get. Usually, be statistically. Honest. Depends on how you're priced, you know, and uh, there's a lot of things that factor in there, but if, um, you know, that is, if you're thinking that your home hasn't sold in a week and it's not going to sell because it hasn't sold yet, that's that's not realistic thinking. We need to get back to normal. Right, yeah. our, our market is still very active and very strong and I think people need to realize that and they just need to understand that it's just not gonna be as fast and furious as it was. We're moving more into uh, the traditional way we used to do business pre-pandemic chaos. So, you know, 
they're going to sit a little bit longer. They're still moving. Uh, you're, turnkeys are going to move faster than your fixer-uppers. Investors are now having the opportunity to come in. So I like all those corrections. Yes. And speaking of corrections, yes. so did you guys see what happened to Open Door this week? Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> so do we know who they are? Um, uh, who's Open Door? I've never heard of them. They are, um, so they are one of many of the, uh, you know, they're I buyer buyers. sector. Yeah. I, I buyer sector, yeah. So they are cash, um, they run these advertisements, they'll buy your home for cash, you'll make more money than you can um, traditionally selling your home. Right. No headache, no repairs, all this wonderful, great news. We're, right, it we're sounds... just gonna come in, we're gonna buy your house, it is going to be easy peasy and you are going to net more money, yeah. is how they've uh, presented themselves. Well, now, the FTC was like, yeah, that's not exactly true. You've deceived these people. And so they got slapped with a $62 million fine. Yes. So the way that they were called out on deceitful practices um, was basically, and this is something that um, I, I, we've even talked about here on the show before, is they come in with these offers. So let's say your house is, um, you say your market value, your house, when you look at comparables, Realtor meets with you, they're gonna price your house at 550. Open Door also runs comparables on the homes. They do the same thing, the same formula that we do, and they're going to come in and see that that's that market value price. Right. They know the realtors are gonna quote you this price, so they're gonna come in at 550, sometimes even 555, just to make sure that they get the sell. Right. Yeah. But, okay, so I buying, let's say 2017 to 18 was really when it was, I guess at its peak, right? And um, the iBuyers were coming in and they're giving you fair market value, but I ran my home, my personal home, through the iBuyer programs when Redfin, Open Door, were, uh, what was the other one, Purple Brick? I don't even know if that's uh, still around anymore. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. yeah, something so, like something that. Like yeah. that. Oh, something like anyway, that. Anyway, um, okay. so I ran my personal home through it. And when I got the paperwork back, yes, they were offering me market value, but there were so many hidden fees and add-ons and prices that a 6% listing for me to net X amount of dollars um, with a traditional sale of a realtor and what have you was so much better than their almost 13% mm -hmm. for them to sell it open door easy. Yeah, I, I've calculated. I keep it in my listing presentation. Yeah, I, it, so do I, yep. so do I. I've calculated their fees anywhere from seven to 13, 14% on average. That's, um, they say there's no repairs, but they do require a credit in lieu of. And one of the other things, like we all know, they're in the proper, um, in the business of flipping homes. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right. So they're, they're basically a flipper, but if they're going to walk in that home and they need new carpet for that flip, or they need new paint for that flip, they charge you. Right. Yeah. They charge the seller. The they're seller not absorbing pay. that cost. Like a traditional flipper would take, like, this is the cost of doing business. I have X amount per square foot that I'm going to spend, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it was, it was completely different, but we all, not we all the public got dazzled by this quick eye buy. And they, um, even though they got six, stuck with a $62 million fine, in the grand scheme of things, that's nothing. They're almost a $5 billion company. Yeah, so absolutely. But I do think that it's going to be eye-opening because the FTC is going to force them to do more um, honest practices if they do stay in business, which is going to be that this this is their model. This is how they've been doing business. And there's going to this is just the beginning because there's a lot of eye buyers that are doing the same thing that have the same practice. So the I think that we're going to see yeah. we're going to see a lot more of this come out and um, it is a shame. It is it there's there's times that I've spoken to people that didn't contact me first, even times that there's past clients. Yeah. And um, they, you know, you talk to them and they sold their home to this company and you're just like, why did you do that? You lost so much money. You left so much money on the table. So. Yeah, but that's not their fault. It was literally deceptive practices. They were given some a shiny object being like, we're gonna make it easy. You're gonna make the most money. I love it. You want 550? Here's 550. But they're paying on those back ends and those fees and those fines. Not fines, fees and uh, I guess other, no, I can't talk amounts of money that they're charging you. Right. So um, our July, or our statistics came out for closed units mm, okay. um, in July. 
So this is the first time I've seen it below 3000 for a while. So our closed units in July uh, were 2893. Yeah. So just to give you an idea of where that is from the months prior, um, June was 3655. June was when we started to see the slowdown. Yep. That's when we started to see the market change. And March of this year, 2022, our closed units were 4517. Yeah. yeah, so it's slowed down. They've pumped the brakes a little, but business is still happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so what are you seeing at like the listing table, the buying side when, when, when you're going over like numbers and comps and everything with that? When we're looking at things, I'm finding it more important to price um, to not what had previously sold, but mm -hmm. what is our current and active competition. Absolutely. Because depending, every seller has their own motivation, right? And it's important for us as agents when we get to the table, we need to have those conversations and really figure out what their motivation is for selling. Mm -hmm. And so once we find their motivation, that's where we'll really know how to price that home accordingly. Absolutely. Because if they are in need of getting out of that home as quick as possible for whatever reason that may be, we need to make sure we're pricing to the active competition and um, showing better, having more open availability, getting people in and out of your home and just having an overall marketing presence. Right. So <laughs> that, that's one thing I've changed on my um, presentation and, and running comps as well. I look at what the last home sold for just to get kind of a general you know, idea, mm -hmm. but it's what, what, what's available for sale within two miles. Right, because now we're in a comparison market. Yeah. There's options. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you're selling a single story, three bedroom, two bath, what are all the single story, three bedroom, two baths going for in the area? Because that's going to play a factor. So yeah, we're doing, we're, we're having to, to check more against what, what we're selling and what else is out there yeah. that's similar yeah. to see if we have a chance of performance. So yeah, that's, um, that, that's a thing that's changed in our market. Another thing, another um, headline that's come out is um, uh, Las Vegas, and you, you spoke a little bit about this earlier, is Las Vegas is cooling faster than a lot of the other markets. Yeah, yeah, and not substantially, so I don't want to scare anybody <laughs> with that. But yeah, another report, I, don't, I can't remember if that one was from the Wall Street Journal, that um, we were one of the top cooling markets, that we are slowing down faster than anybody, because but we're not at a screeching halt, but we definitely have been like, whoa, Let's let's see what we're doing here. Why do you think that is? School's coming back. I mean, this <laughs> yes, is typical. This is true. <laughs> Pre-pandemic, right, this, this was this was very typical in our market. So what we're seeing is people are prepping for school. School starts Monday. Yay! Yeah. Um, so kids are going back. <laughs> um, parents' focuses have changed a little bit right now, yeah. and that's just been traditional over the years. Every year in Vegas. July 4th, and it's 4th of July. It's yep. always it's on always. the day. 4th of July, the market slows down. It could be because we hit triple digits. It could, and this year we got rain, and nobody in Vegas wants to go outside when it's raining. <laughs> I do. No, I love you. it. <laughs> no, it, did you see 10 million videos of the rain on Facebook and oh, social media? My, like? Okay, so you know I'm the big TikTok <laughs> fan, right? So as I'm scrolling through, it was all these TikToks about people in Vegas going outside to take pictures of the rain. The rest of the country must think we're insane, <laughs> right? We're posting all over Facebook, like, water drops on my windshield. Look at my plants are happy. And yeah. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're not used to water. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's always the running joke like if you wash your car between july 10th and august 10th it's gonna rain mm -hmm. so yeah well well good there must have been a lot of car washing because we have gotten a lot of rain it looks like it's going to rain again today it so. is it's so beautiful and windy and cloudy outside yeah and we need it so let's do it absolutely right? absolutely but that does affect that this really does affect it affects open houses we all know you never want to have an open house when it's overcast because if it starts raining no one's coming in Right, yeah. like they're not. People won't get out of their their vehicles. They're not used they're to this terrain. water. <laughs> They'll melt. I don't know what'll happen, but it is not. No one wants to be outside. If it's windy, they don't want to be outside. If it's too hot, they don't want to be outside. So, Vegas yeah. is um, Vegas is different there. Like you know, we rarely know our neighbors. No one comes out. No one socializes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Well, um, I think it's a combination, like you said, kids going back to school, interest rates, then you've got all of the people who are like, I'm going to wait for the market to crash to buy. And yeah. there, I'm getting in position to buy that, all the foreclosures and stuff. But so many people have equity in their house 
that I don't see a lot of foreclosures. I haven't been talking to anybody doing any notice of default or anything. Have you guys? There's 44 foreclosures on the market right now. Oh, across all, all 44? Price point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so all 44. Um, 44. That's nothing to. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just pick up those 44 to add to my portfolio? <laughs> yeah, I'll be posting that as a foreclosure list. You want <laughs> yeah. it? Here's 44 homes. <laughs> pick your favorites. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's not a lot. People still have equity. And, and I do think that the market is not as bad as everybody thinks it is it's just panic right now well we get the headlines like you know market the las vegas market is cooling faster than anywhere in the country yeah we've slowed down it's yeah. true but we're not that far i think it's like we're 24 percent and seattle's 22 percent and milwaukee's 19 it's not uh, the drastic truth, uh, the truth of the matter is those headlines are just making buyers not not want to move forward with their their and plans such a good but time they for still them have, to have I, options i know but they yeah they still have the plans these buyers are going to buy still you know the buyers that yeah. how many buyers were you working with leia that had uh, didn't purchase a home that didn't purchase a home over the last year because they got beat out with competition, yeah. because the market got too too challenging for them, that just decided to hold off. I had Buyer's so many. Buyer's defeat. Buyer's defeat. And that was the really hard part for so many of them. And so these are the calls now I get to make that I'm super excited to have. That come on, let's welcome you back to the market. Yes. Where you can now get closing costs covered by some sellers. They're which like, is crazy. What? I don't need $30,000 extra yeah. in trying to save. You know? Right. And, yeah. So and that's such a a great feeling to be able to come and tell people so when we're telling this this is a great opportunity for our buyers to come back in this market and position themselves and start accruing equity equity over time rather than renting and throwing away money right right, right. and those entry-level buyers there were no homes under 400,000 like you couldn't find one no you no. couldn't find anything you were lucky to find a condo and now there are many there's a lot to there's choose option from. Yeah. yeah I there, have 32 under 350 in a cart right now wow that's, that's amazing yeah, yeah so there there's options yeah all of these buyers they didn't give up the news is scaring them they've backed off but they didn't give up no they're they'll, gonna they'll be make back. their way back onto the market which is so nice because in the spring they were getting beat out. There was no options. Now it's to the point where you tell your buyer, just pick your favorite one and we'll write an offer. And they're <laughs> usually getting into contract. There's no writing on multiple properties. There's no um, begging and borrowing with list agents. What does your client want? How can we sweeten this deal? What can we do to make this viable option for my buyer? Yeah. I was showing houses the other day and I had, after my showings, I had five showings and three of the seller's agents reached out to me with offers for my buyers. Oh. <laughs> One of them was like, hey, we'll give them a $30,000 credit. And I was I like, you know, it's, it, it, it's, they had propositions for the buyers, like tell them this, if they make an offer, we'll do oh, this. Oh yeah, I feel, so. I feel like a rock star. I open my email and it's got reverse prospecting <laughs> from list agents. Like I see you sent this to my client. I'd love it. Just so you know, they're offering a carpet credit or we'll pay closing costs or we're this and we're that. And I'm just like, ee -hee, I love it. Yeah, no, it is. It is time to shine. Get out there, get your home right now because this is the, this is the time. Yep, this is yeah. the time. Um, so motivation is the key element right now for sellers. Yes. Yeah. If you're not motivated, you this really shouldn't be on the market. Yeah, no. You, you really shouldn't. Those people that are like, oh, I just want to put it out there and see if it will sell. Or um, I, I'm still talking to the people that say that like they, you know, they want it overpriced and they're not going to budge on the price and they're going to wait for the price to come back and his inventory stacks up that price the, the chances of getting that right price it's are not lower. likely yeah it's not likely no need to be greedy and if they have to rebuy at least they're buying in a more i guess vast market so they have more options yeah yeah the thing is um it, it's you're not losing money by adjusting your price to market value you're saving your equity mm -hmm. yeah because yeah. if it sits it sits and then you don't get any equity. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if our market does have a 20% correction and we're at a 10% spot right now, do you do you want to hold out? Do you want to take that 10% correction instead of hold out till it's 20? I don't know if it's going to get to 20. It could stay it could stay at 10. It could go down. You know, we we don't know what is going to happen, 
but you you need to save um, save your equity before it starts to vanish. Yeah. yeah. Only takes three homes to sell in the neighborhood for your price of your home to typically shift, right? Absolutely. So when you're looking at that, if someone gets desperate and needs to sell, well, I seen it. I told you that that four hundred thousand, the four hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah, you know, yeah. save sixty grand on it. Yeah, and that is uh, the other neighbors. You know, I mean, they've got to be livid, <laughs> furious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's other homes that were listed in the neighborhood that were listed reasonably, and that person just just killed it for them. So. It's it, it's there, you know, and that's going to happen, especially in the environment that we're in right now. Yeah, yeah, yep, I agree 100%. All right, so Leah, how do people reach you if they want to talk real estate, get some more, get some more options, talk some more about what's uh, what's happening? And yeah, definitely, I'd love to be able to speak with anyone. My contact information is on there. I'm best found at uh, 702-381-2040. Feel free to check out my website for current inventory as well, www.elucient, E-L-U-C-I-A-N-T.com. All right, nice. wonderful. All right, Trish, how do people get a hold of you if they uh, want to talk real estate? You can call me, 702-308-2878. <laughs> Again, we are taking uh, listener questions, vegasrealtycheck at gmail.com. So you can just email us directly and we will take your, your questions there. And Tiana, how do people reach out to you? Talk. Talk to me, people. Call me. Text me at 702-379-9948. All right. And we're going to be here every week, Thursdays at 930. And I'll see you next week. So on... make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget that. Uh, yes. Come like, back share. to us. <laughs> like, share, subscribe, download. You'll be notified every week when we post a new show. And thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next week.